me this afternoon is <coughs> football legend, the one and only Mr. Frank Worthington, uh, joining us here on Viva TV. Thanks for very much for uh, Great to uh, joining be us here. this afternoon. Nice to see you. So uh, we're just going to talk a bit, bit about your life, your football career, uh, your uh, non-football career, and uh, everything. You mean my off-the-field activities. activities? Activities. Come yeah. on. Uh, anyway, um, let's take you back to um, your post-war baby. So football was very much up and running again. Yes. And um, your parents played football and your older brothers both played football as well, didn't they? Yeah, my dad played for, he was a professional with Manchester United, never made the grade with United, but moved across to Halifax after the war. He was at the Battle of Arnhem, he was a paratrooper. Okay. And uh, that's where my two brothers came from and they pl both played for, went on to play for Halifax and Grimsby and Notts County, those teams. And I was the one, one born with a, a blessed with a talent that took me right to the top of English football. Right. So was it the family connection that got you into football? or? Yeah, it's in the genes. Not right. the Levi's, but in the <laughs> genes. <laughs> and uh, you come from Halifax anyway, don't you? Halifax, yeah, shelf between Halifax and Bradford. Right. And uh, was that the team you went to watch as a, as a kid? Did you go along and yeah, watch the football? Yeah, my two brothers and my dad both played for Shelf United and uh, obviously it followed on that I, I was... Uh, you know, I went to play for them and then uh, went down to Halifax Town training with them as a youngster. Okay. When brother Bob and Dave were playing for them. And then uh, the manager at Halifax was a guy called Harry Hooper, who uh, he got the sack at Halifax and he got snapped up by Huddersfield Town. And he was aware of my potential. And uh, he came to, he arrived at our house on Burnside Avenue shelf one afternoon and uh, persuaded my mum and dad to take me to Huddersfield, which uh, they were then in the second division, the old second division, and um, next to the first division, yeah. which is now the Premier League, and, yeah. uh, and that's where it all started for me. It all kicked off at Huddersfield Town, and those days, when I look back on them, they were, they were brilliant times, you know, because I learnt my trade there through a brilliant manager who came from Manchester United, a guy called Ian Greaves, who's not with us now, bless him, but he... Uh, he was one of the best managers, I think, in English football that never managed the national team. Right. But he, he was a brilliant manager. High praise indeed. So you were signed as an apprentice in 1966. You see, I've done a bit of research. <laughs> uh, and uh, so what was life as an apprentice like then? Because you see these, these wonderful stadia and these great boot rooms and ice baths and all that kind of thing. Yeah, well, Al although you probably had an ice bath back in the 60s, whether you wanted uh, it or it not. Communal bath it was, but... <laughs> But, but it, what, what it, was apprentice life like back oh, then? It was fantastic because what we had to do, we had to clean the dressing rooms and sweep the terraces and do all the uh, odd jobs around the ground, clean the boots and everything else. And uh, we just absolutely loved, you know, being part of uh, Huddersfield Town Football Club. It was, uh, you, know, uh, you know, it was our aspirations that were going to grow into hopefully bigger things, which, uh, which we finally did, you know. Right. And we, but the learning curve from that, point of view was uh, was just it was a, a joy to be alive sure so uh, when did you get your big break when did you break into the first team yeah well you don't get your own break you make your own breaks okay. right so I, I just worked very hard at my skills as a youngster you know we used to train with the professionals in the morning and then in the afternoons we had a, a practice board in the on the car park where you had you know certain numbers you had to aim for oh, and, right, and, yeah. and I used to work at that for hours and hours and hours, just perfecting my skills and talents and uh, not necessarily having anybody else there with you, but I just used to go out and I just used to love kicking up football, you know, and, um, you know, enhancing my skill level. So when you made that break into the first team, what, what was it like? How did you feel in that first game? Well, that is as good as it gets, you right. know, as a youngster with all your dreams and aspirations, when you actually make your debut for you you know first team it was uh, it was it just meant the whole world to me it was fantastic so does that rank as one of your most favorite games ever does it well absolutely yeah you never ever forget the the day you you make your debut in english football it was, it was brilliant i came on as substitute at crystal palace and the ball came to the back post and i got up and i headed it back across the goal and i sent a half a guy called john coddington it was a tough centre half. He, he uh, equalised for us, and, and that was my, you know, that never, you never forget things like that. One apiece on my debut for Huddersfield Town Football Club. Yes. 
<laughs> so it was a great feeling, a bit of a celebration after that all round. Was it for the whole family? No, not really. It was, you know, our family, we were very low-key in, in celebration. We just, I think we had a, an agenda that we all, you know, we, everybody in the family, we just used to live, drink and eat and sleep football. Right. So it was just one of those dreams come true. Yeah. And you, you were still living at home at the time? Of course. Yeah. yeah. Burnside Avenue shelf between Halifax and Bradford. <laughs> you spent several years at, at Huddersfield um, and at 166 games. Yeah. Um, and uh, from uh, 41 goals as well, which is pretty yeah. good. Do you remember your first goal? Not necessarily my first goal, but uh, I remember the, my first vivid memory of them was when we played West Ham. And they had, uh, in a cup match, and they had three World Cup winners, Bobby Moore, Jeffers, Martin Peters, and we played them off the park. And, and I was on fire. I got 10 out of 10 in the people wow. on the Sunday. That was the first time, you know, one of the vivid memories for you. 10 out of 10 <laughs> in the people newspaper on the Sunday. Wow. And I scored two goals and made two that day. And we played West Ham, Bobby Moore, and Jeffers, might be played them off the park. That was special. Right, that was, okay. yeah, one of the early, you know, memories for me that just, you know, you just, when you have a little backtrack down memory lane, that is, that was one of the great moments Absolutely. For me. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Special. So, um, you moved from uh, Huddersfield on to Leicester, is that right? Yeah, I should have gone to Liverpool. Bill Shankly paid the British record fee for me and uh, all subject to the medical. And because I was a bit of a boy and enjoying the fruits of being a potential England footballer with all the beautiful females around West Yorkshire, <laughs> it, it all backfired on the medical. So, you know, that was my bad luck, as it were. But, right. you know, instead of having 10 caps, which I did, made with Leicester, I would have had 60, 70 caps playing for a team like Liverpool, who dominated English football. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that, that was in the early 70s, wasn't it?